All right, you are live. Hello, um, thanks everybody for joining. Uh, my name's Christian Moss. I'm also known as Mandel Duck, and um, I'm currently uh, working with uh, Zebedee, which is a company I uh, helped co-found. And I'm gonna give a, a presentation, a demo, and a walkthrough on how to integrate Bitcoin into gaming. Uh, so let's get started. Um, so just um, just notice if anybody does have a lightning wallet, get it ready because I will be showing some QR codes to uh, um, pay invoices and also QR codes to um, withdraw some sats. So if you do have a lightning wallet, there'll be an opportunity for you to either pay or get some sats. So a good idea to get them ready. And uh, first question is, is it Zebedee or Zebedee? Um, so I think in British English, it's pronounced Zebedee and in America, people like to call it ZBD, it's your preference. The actual we name. Can you see your screen? Okay, sorry about that. I forgot to share my screen. There we go. Um, yeah, um, so is it ZBD or ZBD? The actual name comes from um, it's like a, a, a kid's TV show. So the name doesn't really have any meaning. It was more of an ambiguous name, but just to kind of get that out there, you can call it either one. And uh, who, what is Zebedee exactly? Um, so Zebedee, we are building um, uh, LDKs and um, um, APIs. So an LDK is basically a lightning de development kit. It's an, an SDK that people can use in tools such as Unity at the moment, uh, Node.js. Uh, we plan to have support for Godot and Unreal engines. And um, these last three are very popular game engines uh, that people like to use. And um, we're currently, we fo we're focusing on Unity because I think 90% uh, of um, indie projects are made with Unity and it's a, a really great engine to get started with. Although we do have plans to support Godot and Unreal in the future. Um, so that's kind of our main product. We have these APIs and SDKs and kind of dashboards for developers. And we're also developing a mobile wallet, um, which it's going to be a lightning wallet. It is really going to be focused on the user experience for gaming. So it's going to kind of be a gaming optimized wallet. And we're also developing sample games, which is what I mainly do at Zebedee. Um, so um, we, we ideally, we're not a game studio. We um, are focusing on the tech to, to make it easier for game studios to integrate lightning. However, we kind of need to develop some sample games just to kind of show what's possible and kind of bootstrap the lightning gaming go. Uh, um, ecosystem. So we have some um, desktop games, some VR games and mobile games. I'm going to be demoing a few of them in a moment. And um, yeah, that's basically what we're building. Um, who, who are we? So Zebedee was co-founded by uh, Simon Cowell, who was a, a former employee at Bitstamp. Andre Nevis, who people might be familiar with from his work with Koala Studio. So Koala Studios obviously came out with Satoshi's Place, which was a uh, um, one of the maybe the first or one of the first lightning applications where you could um, um, it's like a shared uh, picture board where you you pay by the pixel to draw a picture, and then myself Christian Moss um, I've kind of been doing Bitcoin gaming uh, since 2013. I had a few games uh, back in the day. Um, however, due to kind of scaling issues, um, it was quite difficult. So um, I was waiting for something like Lightning, and uh, here I am now continuing what I started in 2013. Um, so I'm not really going to give too much of a slide presentation. I actually thought it'd be better just to kind of um, demo some games and kind of give a technical walkthrough of how anybody who's interested in integrating Lightning in a game, I'm just going to go through some code and a Unity sample to just show you how easy it is. And so I'm going to start off with some sample games. Then I'm going to just um, introduce some of the documentation we have and show the developer dashboard, which is like a, a backend for developers to easily integrate the SDK. I'm going to show how to integrate the SDK, and then I'm going to talk on what does the future hold. Um, so let's get started. Um, yeah, so sample games. At the moment, we have uh, three sample games, um, Saratobi, Satstacker, and Bitcoin Rally. So I'm going to show them in a little bit. I also have Mint Gox, which I'm also going to touch on a bit later. But Mint Gox is a monthly kind of lightning gaming esports event we hold, which anybody in the world can join, where people can play games with lightning. They can earn some Satoshis. And it's just um, a really fun kind of uh, event that anybody can join for free. Um, so I'm just going to uh, just going to show some sample games we have. So let me just switch to my browser here. Um, okay. 
Yeah. So this is one of the, it's a, it's a very simple game. Um, we're, we're starting off with simple games because it's just kind of an easy way to illustrate lightning. This is a game that um, um, I actually originally developed in 2013, uh, but I'm redeveloping it with lightning. It, you basically, you, um, it might be a little bit jerky, I think, when you do screen share, it might not be smooth, but it's a game that's gonna come out on mobile and you swing um, a little monkey and you have to kind of see how far that you can swing and you collect bananas. And if you can see, they're actually kind of small coins that are placed. And if you grab a coin, you basically uh, are able to get a lightning, uh, like a tip. Um, so if I get a coin, um, there are a few scattered around. Yeah. Um, then on the next menu, you can easily withdraw and get some lightning, some Satoshis. So I actually got a coin beforehand. So here's, I've got a small tip here. So if I click on here, um, if somebody wants to try and scan that, they should be able to withdraw some uh, money. Um, if not, I'm going to scan it in a second. So you have to try and beat me to it. Okay, yeah, so yeah, it, it was withdrawn. So that was like, it's a, a very simple game, but it just kind of shows like a simple use case of lightning. Um, the idea being that, you know, um, you can, like a game could be, uh, could have ads in the game or um, could have some sort of purchases. And then um, some of that money or the, the revenue that the game generates can be sent back to the player. So it's quite, um, you know, it's basically like Mario, but you can also take some of the coins out of the game. And uh, if people are familiar with uh, Bitcoin Bounce, which is a popular lightning game on mobile, it has a similar model. So this is a game that we, um, it's coming out on mobile soon. And you can actually play it at the Mint Gox esports events that I mentioned. Um, it also has um, lightning purchases. If you want to buy bananas, one banana is 10 Satoshi. So you can uh, buy some bananas easily. Um, so 10 Satoshi is like a, you know, a, few, a fraction of a cent of anything. And then with the bananas, you can buy power-ups. So it's just a, a very simple way to integrate lightning into a game. And uh, this game's coming out on mobile and um, you'll be able to play it at the Mink Docs events. And so that's one of the games we have as a demo. Another game, um, hold on. Sat Stacker. So Sat Stacker is a game we actually developed uh, for the Advancing Bitcoin conference. And um, if people are familiar with the kind of coin dropper games where you, you play some quarters in a machine and it drops a coin and then it can push out other coins. It's, it's basically the same thing, but with lightning. So it's just kind of, again, a good basic demo to show how you could, you know, if you had a, like a, a physical machine in a, in a bar, you know, or an arcade that this game would really work with something like lightning. So you can buy some coins. I mean, if anybody wants to pay that, I'd be grateful. Otherwise I'm going to scan it and um, get 20 coins for 200 sets. So I've got 20 coins and now I can drop these coins and uh, try and win some more sats. So this is actually, we actually designed this as a faucet um, during the Mink Gox event. It's, um, it's pretty easy to win. You almost always get more coins out than you pay in. Um, but it's just a way for people to get some coins during the events that they can use in, uh, in other games. So I've got, so I've got like uh, 400 sats now, so I can make a withdrawal. And if somebody wants to scan that, they can uh, get 400 sats. Uh, if not, I will try and scan it. Might be a bit too small on the on the screen share for people to scan it. There we go. Yeah, and you know, it's very simple. Um, the beauty of this, like I made all these games back in 2013, similar games, but it was very difficult to do with Bitcoin because eventually, you know, you couldn't just give away 400 sats because the fees would be, you know, you know, a dollar or even more. So with Lightning, you know, the fees are minimal and the transactions are instant. And it's, um, as I'm going to show it in a little bit, it's very, very easy to implement this into a game. And so, so those are kind of the two simple games we have. We also have been working on, um, as part of the Mint Goxy's online esports events, we've also been working on a multiplayer game um, where people can, from all around the world, they can come online and they can um, kind of um, uh, compete against each other and kind of earn stats between them. 
Um, so that game is called uh, Bitcoin Rally. I'll just give it a reload. Um, so Bitcoin Rally, is, it's basically um, Mario Kart with Bitcoin. Um, it's probably the easiest way to explain it. And um, we're actually doing a Bitcoin Rally tournament on the 13th of September, which is sponsored by BitRefill. So um, people who compete in the game, in the race, can earn up to 2 mi million sats, I believe. Um, but I'll just give a, a, an example of what you can do with, with gaming in a more complicated game. So I'm just going to quickly just uh, host a game um, called Test. Let's play this. Just, just make it myself at the moment. Um, log in. Like Twitter login isn't required. We just have a Twitter login because it kind of assigns the username to the player. So it's just easy to keep track of who playing. So this game, you know, it has a few fun carts. We have a Satoshi cart, we have a Zebedee cart. We have a, a BTC Pay uh, cart because we're actually big fans of BTC Pay and we actually, our SDK also works with BTC Pay as well. Um, we have a Magic Internet Money Wizard cart. We have the Bitcoin roller coaster guy, um, a, a, a lightning gear on the bike. So we have a bunch of characters and we're constantly adding more of them. And um, I'm just going to try and show an example of the Rainbow Road course because we're actually doing with, with gaming. Um, we can actually change the paradigm of how companies can sponsor games. So in this event, we actually, this map was sponsored by BitRefill and they actually have a, a kind of pit stop that as a character, if you go into the game, um, you have a BitRefill pit stop and BitRefill will refill you with, with sats or with bits. Um, so it's kind of a, a great way that, you know, a, an advertiser can directly give the player, you know, some um, money. Um, so I'm just gonna quickly show that game. So the idea of this game is that um, if anybody's ever played Mario Kart, you'll be familiar with the idea that you collect coins. Um, so in this game, all the coins are your Satoshis to keep. So if you, um, if you it might be a, a little bit jerky to see this on the screen, but as you grab some coins, you can actually see in the top corner, um, your sats increase. And these coins can actually be used as a weapon. So say, Every time you get a coin, that's 10 sats. Well, that coin, you can also throw at another player, which in a way you're spending 10 sats. And if you hit them, the player could look, you know, you can overtake them. So it's kind of an interesting paradigm of, um, of um, you know, do I keep my sats or do I try to use them to win? You know, if I try to use them to win, I'll have less sats, but I might win a larger prize. And um, the, these Bitcoin rally events, we have, a bunch of sponsors. So if you come first, second, or third, you can get like a, a million sats or a hundred thousand sats, something like this. And this is the bit refill station. Um, so as as a player kind of drives through here, it says a uh, refilling sats. So I just got about I think I got about a hundred sats down from bit refill, which I can use to fight other players, or you know I can use to I can just keep them and cash them out at the end of the game. Um, this game, we also, at the Mint Gox events, we're also um, experimenting with people who watch the live stream of the tournaments. They can actually pay money. They can drop sats into the game. So the audience can pay to drop a power up. So they could send 250 sats to the game. Those sats go to the kind of the prize pool and it also drops a power up for the player to grab. So again, um, we're kind of sh showcasing how uh, with Bitcoin and the lightning network, we can kind of break that boundary between uh, the audience and the player. Um, so if you want to kind of see that in action, um, you can join the next Mint Gox event uh, later this month. Um, so yes, yeah, so this is a, a more complicated game. So all, all, the, all, all these games uh, I developed in Unity using the Zebedee SDK. Um, so next I'm just going to showcase how how, if you want to make a similar game, how um, simple it is. Um, oh yeah, so lastly, yeah, Mint Gox. So I mentioned Mint Gox throughout all these games, all these events. So, um, so Mint Gox is a monthly esports event. Um, it came about because we were actually planning to um, develop games and have games ready for some of the larger Bitcoin conferences, such as uh, Bitcoin 2020 and the Magical Crypto Conference. However, due to COVID, they were all canceled. So we decided, why do we not? You know, 
why not just um, have an online conference, you know, uh, with the game. So we, we made a VR world that people can join and um, hang out in a conference in VR. Or if you just want to enjoy the conference, you can do it from your web browser where you can play the games I've just um, shown and you can earn some stats and you can also kind of watch the live tournaments and send some stats to interact. Uh, so Mint Gox is um, uh, something I recommend uh, people to join. Next one is on the 13th of September, just um, Google Mint Gox or it's uh, Mint Gox on Twitter uh, for more information how to take part in that. Yeah, so now I'm just going to kind of show like some of the documentation we have. Um, so I'm kind of just from now I'm just kind of um, speaking to people who are interested in perhaps developing a game with Bitcoin and Lightning. And if people maybe not plan to develop a game, um, hopefully it'll give you a, an idea of how one would go about adding uh, Bitcoin into a game. So let me just uh, go to here, go to the, yeah. So we, we have, um, if you just go to zebd.io, we have all the documentation, um, all, all the guides. Um, we have an API, a uh, REST API. Um, so the REST API lets you develop things, um, lets you create invoices, it lets you create, uh, which we call charges, um, but it, it's really just an invoice. So you can, in any you know, environment, it could be um, Node.js or Unity, you could uh, create an invoice and easily um, add a kind of um, a store to your game that the people could buy game items with Lightning. We also have a withdrawal request. A withdrawal request, this is the opposite of an invoice. This is if you want somebody to be able to, um, to get Lightning from a game. So if the game wants to send a player, you know, some Bitcoin as a reward, or perhaps you have a multiplayer game where, you know, um, one player has um, defeated another player and they can claim the player's stats. Um, this is a type of function that you would use. And these work with um, pretty much all mobile Lightning wallets at this point um, with the protocol LN URL, which is a, an easy way for a game or an app to allow a mobile wallet to um, receive some Bitcoin. And so it's, these are the two basic functions we have at, at the moment. Um, we are also working on some additions to LN U URL. So at, at the moment, kind of Bitcoin and Lightning is very kind of, it, it's centered around you have a QR code and you scan a QR code and you pay a QR code, which, which is kind of great, you know, for like an online store or if you want to buy coffee. However, for gaming, you really don't want to have to pull out your phone. Like say you're playing a game like, you know, um, Fortnite and you're shooting other players. You kind of want the Satoshis to directly go to your wallet without having to open your phone. So we're actually um, working on some standards and protocols that would let um, mobile wallets kind of link with a game and um, allow the, the players to stream stats between them without having to scan, you know, or to confirm. So that would really uh, allow the gameplay to change. So, um, you know, I think that's, um, that's kind of where we see lightning and gaming going. However, you know, more details on that at the moment. I think for people who are interested on the LN URL GitHub, we do have a few pull requests. So if you want to take a look at the code for the more technical people, um, you can take a look and add comments there. Um, this is kind of yeah, the documentation. Um, also, uh, yeah, there's some tutorials. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to briefly go over how to use the SDK in Unity here. However, due to time constraints. If somebody wants to see more in depth, you can actually go here and I actually made a video, which is an, an hour or so long. And it's just me kind of going through the code, showing how to install Unity, showing how to add the SDK, you know, step by step. So that's kind of something that people can go through in their own time. And it's very simple. You, the requirements are you download Unity, you make an account with Zebedee and in a, an hour or two, you can have um, a, a simple game that accepts Bitcoin payments and also can send the player Bitcoin rewards. Um, yeah. Um, next, I'm just going to also show our dashboard. So we also have this dashboard, which is just um, once a developer has added the SDK to their Unity project, 
we made a companion dashboard on the web that they can log in. And this dashboard, let me show you, it, um, it lets you kind of, um, it gives you a fully functional lightning wallet. And these, this wallet is the wallet that will kind of fund the games. So if, if you make a game um, here, you can make a new game. So we have, I have a bunch of test games here. And when you click on a game, you have a, an API key. Um, so don't use this API key because it's just linked to a test account which has a thousand Satoshis. Um, yeah, and then you can um, add that into your Unity project and uh, it, yeah, you can see the bunch of transactions that players are making on your game. You can uh, um, add more funds, et cetera, et cetera. So this is just you know an easy place for people just to kind of um, help fund the games and kind of get the API key. And we're gonna be adding more features to this as we progress. Um, so we're gonna have analytics and things like this. Um, so that's kind of the dashboard. Um, so now I'm just going to, yeah. So now I'm just actually gonna get to, to, get to the actual um, meat, meat and bones of today, which is actually just showing some kind of more technical code um, in Unity. Uh, so people who are kind of new to game dev, I recommend Unity as it's a really easy game engine to use. As I mentioned before, it's what 90, 95% of um, game developers or indie game developers seem to use. Pretty much all the games on the app stores are developed with Unity. There are other engines out there such as Unreal. So, but Unreal is more aimed at larger studios who are making games for things like PlayStation and AAA games. Um, Unity is pretty powerful. You can make photo realistic games if you want, but it's also just an easy way to make some of the games I, I showcased before, such as Bitcoin Rally. Um, so let me just, uh, let me just jump into Unity. Yeah, so um, once you've downloaded y Unity from the website, um, this is focused around um, a great, a great example, a free um, project. So once you download Unity, they have this great free project called the Adventure Sample Game. And Unity developed this as a great phase a great place for people who aren't new to game dev as a sample kind of boilerplate project that they can download. It has some tutorials explaining how game dev works. So um, we added this into our SDKs and tutorials because it's free and it's a somewhat standard for new people coming on to Unity. So this is the, the game that um, my demo is gonna just be based around. Um, let me just link back to the, to Unity. Yeah. Um, so all I've done here is I've added this is kind of the boilerplate game as it comes once you've downloaded it. And I've added what's called a canvas. So a canvas in Unity Talk is basically your UI. So I just added a space here. So a simple UI, which will show a QR code. And here there's some text, which will just kind of say, um, pay the invoice. So it's very simple. I've just added this kind of simple UI because I'm going to demonstrate how you can make a paywall or have a purchase in the game. Um, and we also have our, um, our, so this is called a scene control. So Unity, how it works is you basically have these objects and on the objects you attach scripts. So I have this object and I've attached a script. Um, what people need to do is they need to install the Zebedee SDK, which is, if you go onto our website, it has more detail there. Um, basically you add your API key and the Zebedee base URL. So those are the two things you need. So the URL is API at Zebedee, that's in the documentation and the API key you get from the developer dashboard. So those with those two things, we can actually just add that in to Unity and with the Zebedee SDK, you can make a paywall. I'm just gonna kind of quickly just show how this game works. Um, let, me just, let me just maximize that. Yeah, so we've, um, we have, oh, one second, the, for some reason the game view has disappeared.
bear with me one second. Uh, small technical issue here. Oh, just give me one second, folks. For some reason, the um, Zoom has changed the resolution of the of the screen, so Unity doesn't like it. I just need to, I think, increase the resolution. Let's try again. Try the engineer's trick of just reloading it. Okay, this should work, okay. Okay, yeah, so sorry about that. Yeah, so we basically started the game. We've just added a simple overlay and which is play game for 100 sats. So I'm just going to scan that QR code. And that, um, yeah, invoice is paid and now the game should start. As this is a very simple game, if anybody's familiar with the old style kind of um, LucasArts adventure point and click games, um, the end of the game is this. Uh, Character just needs to kind of go through here. However, she doesn't have authorization, access denied. Um, so I'm just gonna quickly solve this game. That she basically has to impersonate this character here and he'll, she'll be allowed to go through. Um, so in this game, we basically just need to grab this coin. Uh, we need to get some coffee. And we need to um, annoy this bird. So this bird then flies up and uh, knocks over the disguise. We can grab the disguise. So all this game is completely open. So you can actually download this game from Unity and kind of expand on it and you know kind of add your own characters and you know improve, you know, expand the gameplay. Um, but now we've solved this, um, we are going to um, complete the game and then we will get a Satoshi reward. Uh, yeah, so I should be allowed to go through. Wait, no, I've got to give him his coffee. Hold on, there we go. Yeah, okay, go through Frank. And now this should show, um, yeah, congratulations, withdraw 100 sets. So then the player can scan this and they um, can withdraw the Satoshis and um, yeah, we draw complete and that's the game finished. So obviously this is just a very, very simple, just showing how you can kind of add a, the ability to pay and the ability to withdraw. Um, like I said, we didn't do much. We just downloaded that sample project, the adventure game. We added the Zebedee SDK and we added our API key and uh, API U URL in, into the settings. And um, next I'm just gonna kind of show how easy it is in code. So give me one second. I'm just gonna have to increase my display resolution so you can see the text a bit easier. So there we go. Yeah. So this is the code for that scene. Um, so there's a lot of code that's related to the game, but I'm just going to show what's related to lightning. So here we basically have the Zebedee client um, on the start function. So the start function is like a main function. In Unity, it's, it's not the first thing that's called. It's actually the second thing that's called, but it's kind of the, the, the part where you add your start code. And all we need to do basically is um, Zebedee client, we instantiate the client, we add the URL and the API key, which these are properties here that we can, we fill in in the UI. Um, so that's how simple it is to get your object. Uh, here we have a link to the QR code text. So that's the text that displays under the QR code. 
And if you look here, we have an image, which is a cute QR code image. So if, you, if you're not new to Unity, this is probably a little bit complicated, but it's actually really, really simple. It's, you know, any basic learn Unity in an hour tutorial will get you to be able to kind of add, you know, simple image for the QR code. But that's what we do in the start function. And then the, after, in the start function, the first thing we do is call pay for a gameplay. So this is a function that just loads the paywall that we saw at the beginning. And all we do is we make a charge. So a charge is an invoice. Um, we chose to call it a charge because an invoice we found was confusing to non-Bitcoin developers or non-Lightning developers. So having kind of normal game developers who may not be familiar with Bitcoin in mind, a charge seemed to make more sense than an invoice, but a charge is really just an invoice. Uh, as far as Lightning is concerned. We give it a description. So we have the fee. And then we have, so it'll be like uh, 100 sats for Zebedee SDK game demo. So this will actually show in, in the dashboard um, as the transaction. And we have the amount in Satoshi. Um, yeah, um, we also do have support for milli Satoshis, but just for this um, uh, tutorial, we're just doing the amount in Satoshi, which is the, the gameplay fee in sats. So once we've made our charge object, we pass that to the Zebedee client create a charge um, function. And then we um, handle the invoice or handle the callback with this function here, which is handle invoice. So we've, we've instantiated our object, we've made a charge and we pass it to create charge async. Um, so this will basically what this does is this returns um, the invoice, the, you know, the, um, the data we need to display to the user so they can scan it with their Lightning wallet and pay. Um, so in the uh, response, in the charge response invoice, we get the, it's called the request, which is the actual, the string, the text. And we also have an ID of the charge. So we, we will use the ID to check the status of the invoice or, or the charge. But with those two, we pass this, the actual invoice text to a function which is generate QR. So that function is somewhere at the bottom. Very simple, just basic boilerplate C sharp and Unity to make a QR code. Um, yeah, so we have the QR code that's returned as what's called a texture. So in games, you know, we don't really say images, we say textures. So that is a kind of a 2D texture. And we assign that texture to our QR code image UI element. And that up to that point, that's all you need to add is these few lines of code and, and that will let you kind of show an invoice. So that could be used for a paywall or that could be used to sell some game items. Very straightforward, not complicated at all. Um, next thing we want to do is we want to sub subscribe to the, um, to the status of the invoice. So we basically want to know when the invoice has been paid. Um, so this is this line of code here. We await the Zebedee client subscribe to the charge or subscribe to the invoice. Once we get a status message, um, we handle it here. So here, which, which we're waiting for the completed message. Once the status completed has come, it means the invoice has been paid. And all we're doing here is we're changing the QR code image to paid. And that's it, you know? And um, yeah, all this stuff just next, this just loads the game basically. So. Yeah, all the lightning stuff to um, make an invoice and starting set payments in your lightning game is basically this line of code, uh, these lines of code, and then uh, these this code here. And this is all in our tutorial. Um, and our SDK is also open source, so you can take a look at the nuts and bolts. Um, if you're not a Unity dev, you can also use our REST API to you know add it to a web-based game or a game in, in a different engine. Um, but that's the basis of it. Um, the last part of it, which we saw, which was to do the withdrawal, which is when you want to give the player um, some Bitcoin. That's very, very simple. It's the same thing. Um, we basically, instead of making a charge object, we make a withdraw, fun a withdraw object, give it a description, give it the amounts, all the same. And then we call Zebedee client withdraw async. So we pass the withdraw object, um, we, we call this function as the handler, handle withdraw. So once the, the withdraw object is, is made, um, which is an LN URL format, we get it here. Um, we generate the QR code with it and we make, we add that to the QR code image. 
the user scans it. Same thing as we did for charge, we subscribe to the withdraw async. And once the status completed has come through, we can handle accordingly and sh show an image. Yeah, so that is basically, it's dead simple. Um, again, I, it's, um, we have the video on the documentation that you can go in, you can download the sample project. I, I, I talk you through it. And if you have any questions on that, you can also join our Discord where if you have some technical questions, somebody from the team can help you. Um, but with that, anybody can basically add lightning payments and rewards to the game. Um, yeah, so let me just head on back to my presentation. Yeah, um, yeah. So, um, so that was the kind of how to show a QR code. Um, what we are planning more interesting things. So, like I said at the moment, Bitcoin is very much is very much kind of this focused around QR codes, which is fine for kind of commerce. However, for gaming, you know, I, I, I haven't seen any game where somebody scans a QR code to pay for things. You know, so we really want to allow people to do kind of you know, more interesting things. And we're actually um, also developing the tools and SDKs for that. So now I'm just gonna talk a little bit about the future. Um, so yeah, so we have a few projects I'm, we're working on, or I'm working on, which I've kind of illustrated with images here. So we have a Twitch. Um, so something that's, that's really, really big in gaming and we realize that people don't really just play games anymore. You know, um, I guess when I was playing games, that's what, you did, you bought a game and you played it and that was it. However, most people seem to watch other people playing games nowadays and that's actually a massive market. And um, there's also this paradigm which I touched on with Bitcoin Rally of um, something we showcase at Mint Gox where the audience watching an esports event, they kind of, at the moment, they can't really interact. However, with Bitcoin, we want them to be able to kind of also interact, to kind of send Bitcoin into the game and for also the game to send Bitcoin to them. So we're actually developing, um, I can't talk too much on it now because it, it's not officially announced, but we're developing a kind of streamer app, which will allow people, if you are a gamer yourself, you might not be a game developer, but you enjoy playing games um, and you like to stream games, you can play a popular game like Fortnite or League of legends and we're going to make an app that would overlay on your game and then um you can stream your game to twitch and people can kind of see you play your game but they can also send you some bitcoin um there'll be like a qr code that'll be on your stream and once you get that qr code you know it might show a message like a super chat feature uh, or perhaps you can run competitions but we're just going to allow non-developers to also kind of integrate lightning into their game experience. That's something we're working on. Um, hopefully we'll be able to announce more details on that soon. Um, but I think it's gonna be pretty cool. Another thing, uh, top right, um, VR. So this is the movie or the book, Ready Player One. And VR is something that we're also actively in. We have these um, Min Gox events with VR. Uh, many people watching this have probably attended some of the Bitcoin VR events such as Reckless VR and also Mint Gox where we have like a VR world that you can go into or people may have joined a VR chat party. However, the kind of the current platforms such as VR chat and AltSpace, they don't let you kind of integrate Bitcoin, they're, they're kind of closed. So um, I've actually started work developing a VR multiplayer game. Um, hopefully more details will be able to announce it in it next few months but the idea is you'll be able to download this vr game and I'm, it's probably going to be something like a, a bow and arrow archery style game um, where you know you link your wallet with the game and you um you shoot another player with a bow and arrow and when you shoot them you get sats from them you know um, and if they shoot you they get your sats um something i really want to do is add healers into the game so if you're a healer you can maybe like zap lightning bolts from your fingers in VR and kind of send stats to the player which will revive them. So we're really kind of keen in kind of integrating lightning into VR. The only, it, the blocker at the moment has been that obviously in VR you can't scan a QR code or you can't get out your phone, you know. Um, so that's kind of been the barrier to entry but as we are developing these kind of tools and these protocols to let you link your wallet with the game so you don't have to scan a QR code 
or accept or confirm payments, that will really open up the possibility to you. Um, you link your your phone with the game, you put your VR headset on, and then from then on, you can kind of stream money through your mind or through your fingers or, or whatever in a virtual world. Uh, so hopefully you'll be able to kind of have something that people can play l later this year. Um, the bottom left again, um, this is um, two people kind of battling with lightning bolts. So this kind of touches on to what I just said, the idea that players can stream lightning between them without having to, sc to scan a QR code. We, are, we started the initial proposal on LN U URL for allowances. So lightning allowances, you basically you authorize your wallet to um, let a game charge the wallet up to say, you know, $5 up to an hour, you know, um, without you having to confirm the payment each time. And once you have that in place, that will allow the game and the wallet to seamlessly kind of stream stats between each other. Um, I believe that Will O'Byrne from um, LN Jewel, I think the browser, he kind of started work on this actually. So credit goes to him. Um, however, I think kind of maybe it didn't make too much sense. There weren't that many browser applications. So hopefully we can make some games that actually kind of showcase the UK, the shows, um, show the use case a, a bit more, a bit better. And uh, lastly, there's something I'm actually, I've actually been working on, which is if people are familiar with this logo, it's the Quake logo. And uh, for people who are, um, you know, I guess under 30, they might not know this game, uh, but this was one on the forefront of first person shooters and multiplayer games. I believe it was really the first proper 3D multiplayer game. And the Quake has had a history of the developers had the good sense to make it mod friendly. And they also had the, um, they also, they open sourced everything uh, from, from the game engine, which means the game has never really died. I think the game was released in the early 90s and the game is still, I, I, I logged on today and there's a load of matches. So one of the issues we have with Lightning Gaming at the moment is there just aren't enough games, to be honest. And just even outside of Lightning in general, kind of blockchain games, it takes a long time for a developer to make a good game. And most games that people make are terrible. It, you know, it really takes a proper studio to kind of make a decent game uh, or you know, somebody just to come up with a great new idea. So if we're honest, if people try to make lightning games, pr probably 90% of those games are gonna be, gonna be terrible. Um, you know, and I kind of saw that with a lot of the blockchain games and crypto games, people were adding, they were doing cool stuff with the games, you know, but, you know, but just the games weren't really good games in themselves. So we kind of thought, well, wouldn't it make sense if we can get an existing popular game can we find a way to integrate lightning into those games, you know, because we don't necessarily want to be a game studio, but if there are great games there already, why can't we just, you know, add the ability for people to play them with lightning. And um, um, I might get a little bit technical here because it's a technical Tuesday, but over the weekend, I did a mini hackathon where I downloaded the Quake source code. Um, it's open source and tried to see how I can mod it. And um, there were a few technical um, kind of issues there. And uh, one is the Quake source code. The game engine is open source, but none of the Quake game data is actually open source. So actually the, you know, the logo for Quake or the characters or the maps, all this you, you kind of have to make from scratch, which was a bit of a bummer, you know? So I thought, well, you know, I don't necessarily you know, want to kind of make kind of characters and maps for a game that was, you know, made in the 90s. There aren't really nice tools to do that. Um, so then I looked at the, um, well, maybe we can actually just mod the game. You know, can we make a mod that people download the game and they install the mod and then that lets them do lightning. Um, so I actually um, got the Quake source code. I went, looked at a few tutorials, joined some forums on how to, to mod the game. And Quake itself, the game is actually, it actually has two components. You actually have the client of the game and the server. And Quake 3, which is the game I, I was looking at, it's only multiplayer. And even if you play a local game with yourself, you it still kind of, it, it, it makes this client and server. So you, the client, which is like the front end of the game, the UI still connects to the separate process, which is the server in the background. However, that connects over local host. Um, so the server is actually quite easy to mod um, because it's all in just, general C, you can use, you know, general C libraries and stuff. So I thought, you know, well, can I add 
the ability, can I add a QR code in that game? Um, so when players are playing, once they kind of get a score, we can show a QR code in the game that they can scan and they can pay some stats or withdraw some stats. So, however, that had to be done on a client. So I looked into the modding the client and the client is actually, it, it's not normal C, I would say. It, it runs, it doesn't use like a normal compiler. It, it kind of, it's compiled for the Quake virtual machine and they don't even have Booleans. They have like a Quake Boolean. So I tried to find a QR code library, you know, the standard QR code library, and it just wouldn't work because the, you know, the Quake virtual machine didn't even support basic kind of certain integer values. Everything was quite customized to Quake. So it seemed like a kind of, I'm sure it's technically possible, but you basically have to write your own QR code library in a, in a Quake virtual machine language. Um, and even if you had that, then you would have to do the networking, you know, the kind of the curl request. And I just thought it would, it would just kind of, it would just be complicated and break so many things it wouldn't be worth it. Um, so I did some more research and this is actually true of Quake and also some other games such as CSGO. And it's actually quite an interesting approach, which I'm gonna try to do is um, because these games have a server, you can actually talk to the server over a protocol um, UDP protocol, depending on the game. So for Quake, you can actually talk to your server and get all the kind of the current game status um, using a UDP protocol. So I, I made a simple kind of um, uh, uh, Node JS app that I, I made a Quake game and I had a, some players join the game and then I had this Node JS app which could pretty much in real time it could kind of log and show the status of which player had what points, you know, um, and it would say the player's IP address, the kill, the, the score kills. And then it occurred to me that we could actually build an overlay app, very much like the, the streamer app on Twitch, that you, you play Quake, you have this overlay app, which kind of sits on top of your window and would kind of show your current stats, the stats you've earned. And as you're playing the game in Quake, the, um, the server would get updates of if you, were, if you shot somebody, if you killed somebody, or if you were killed or, or fragged. I should say in Quake. And then your actual overlay window could update to say, you know, you kill somebody plus 10 sats or, or you died minus 10 sats. And then that way you could kind of be able to kind of earn sats and l lose sats in real time. And you'd also be able on that overlay window to kind of click on there and withdraw your sats to your wallet. And we could also do some more interesting things where if you stream it on Twitch, uh, people could, the audience could also kind of send sats and that could kind of spawn, you know, some game items, some weapons, some power-ups or some bots into the game. Um, so this kind of, it seems that, I mean, uh, again, this is in the future slide, but I hope to be able to make this a reality that um, without having to mod the game at all, people can just go onto Steam and they could just buy Quake or there are a few other games which follow this model. I think CS goes us as well. They could just buy these games and then with this kind of companion app that sits as an overlay on top, um, you could kind of integrate lightning and let players kind of, um, their, their sats could be their health as it were, you know, and they could pay a thousand sats to join the tournament or 10,000 sats. And uh, if they get shot, they lose some sats, the sats go to the other player. And once their sats are zero, they're kicked out of the game. And this is, you know, we don't have to mod Quake or anything. It's just, you just download this extra app that sits on top of it. Um, so this is something I, I hope to bring out as well. And kind of sh that way we can make use of a large library of games that exist and good games. Um, they're actually, once I looked into this, I found out that other companies are actually doing the same thing, but not in crypto. They're doing other stuff like adding kind of an overlay window, which would let you add like chat to Quake or some sort of like a voice over or a voice IP. So they're actually kind of, there is a precedent for this. So it does seem possible. Um, yeah, so that's kind of basically the talk I wanted to give. Um, I guess the main point of this talk is that it's a technical Tuesday, but actually making a game with Lightning isn't that technical. If it was very technical, then I don't think we'd see many people making games. But as you saw, you can download U Unity, which is completely free with a few lines of code. You can kind of get started um, um, making invoices and um, letting players get rewards. Um, 
even if you're not a game developer, but you you, you want to use Bitcoin in gaming, there's other stuff such as I mentioned, like the, the kind of Twitch streaming app we're developing and also the um, stuff like just playing Quake or CSGO and joining a Bitcoin tournament and streaming stats between each other. So all this stuff uh, is coming. Hopefully um, in the next few months, we'll be able to actually let people um, try this out in real life. However, um, if you want to actually try some of this out now, you can join the next Mint Gox online esports event. We, we hold them every month. Next one's the 13th of September. You don't need a VR headset to do it. You just basically go to mintgox.com and on the day of the event, you'll get like, you'll basically see a, a live stream and you get a control panel, which lets you play some of the simple games like the Saratobi and Sat Stacker. So you can earn some stats and then you can watch the Bitcoin rally tournament and um, you can um, kind of pay some stats to drop power-ups to the players. And if you want, you can also enter that tournament, um, but more details on uh, Twitter, on, on Mint Gox, on how to enter the tournament. But if you actually wanted to play as a competitor, if you qualify, you'll be able to win like a grand prize of 2 million sats. Um, yeah, so that is uh, basically my presentation. If you have any questions, just hit me up at Twitter. I'm at Mandelduck. Make sure to follow at Zebedee as well. And uh, thank you very much for watching and uh, hope to see you guys soon.